Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi. As you know that in this show, we keep talking to leading personalities and each week we are bringing you new faces, people who share their views and vision on this show and it has been a very interesting journey with all of you. Yet another edition right now and yet another very important guest here. He is a TMC leader, Trinamur Congress as it is called and his name is Mr. Dinesh Trivedi, some of one of the veterans that we have really known for many long years. Welcome to the show, sir. Railways, do you miss it? I think railways also perhaps miss me. Uh, no, we have to carry on with our work and as long as we are there, we are there. And uh, you do your part of the duty and carry on. Yeah, so talk about the committee, I mean in the sense that you know, you are closely associated I think with this sector and we have seen you. Uh, and now things are happening, there is a new government here and there is a new railway minister, things are happening. But would you like to say something on what really should happen also? I mean, you've looked at the people, you've looked at the infrastructure, you've looked at the sector. Is there anything that you'd like to kind of come Yeah, before I get into all serious business, uh, I, let me compliment uh, Rajya Sabha TV and compliment you. I understand you have done more than 100 of uh, quest shows and it's largely popular. I've also been watching. So I must compliment you for uh, a great success. Thank you so much, and, sir. And it is, is very informative too. So now to answer your question, uh, railway is absolutely an essential part of any economy in the world. You go to any country, you can measure at what stage that country is depending on the condition of the railways. In other words, if you go to Germany, France, USA, UK, China, Japan, mm. just by looking at the railways, you will say, yes, this country is categorized as a developed country, mm. right? Unfortunately, if you see the condition of Indian railways, mm. be it freight, be it passengers, you would feel that this country is still in the stage of development or it is underdeveloped. So there is a lot of contradiction. On one side we have Chandrayaan mm. and we have talent, raw talent in this country. Uh, Why do you think countries. we have not been able to bridge the gaps? Because you have seen it very closely. It is a very good question. The reason we have not been able to do it because do we understand railways? Uh, the political system irrespective of governments which come and go they have not understood the railways and the reason they have not understood the railways is they have just thought of railway as a poor man's transportation from point A to point B. And in, in, even in that case, they have not been able to satisfy that poor man to get his journey from point A to B, number one, safely and number two, like a human being. So this whole debate or question of uh, PPP coming up, uh, where would you look at railways getting into the scene? You see, if your house is not in order, nobody from outside is going to come and set your house in order. Any private sector coming, and I don't blame the private sector, their initial motive, objective would be profit. And why not? That's why they are in that business. They are not NGO, they are not Mother Teresa's set up, mm -hmm. that they have just come for charity. They would come for revenue and where is the revenue model? Even those uh, private sector players who have come in freight, they are want to run away because there is no model, there is no revenue model and down the line in the middle of the game, yeah. you change the rules. But the new government is trying to really learn, trying to adapt and trying to take a step ahead in terms of learning from countries that, you know, let's say the leaders go to. Uh, 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 do you think it's really viable? Do you think it's... It's going to work in the sense that we are going to adapt to new systems, we are looking within and then kind of making it work? Uh, let me tell you, if there is one organization in India which is absolutely efficient and full of talent, that is Indian Railways. And when I say efficient, you may, you know, take it with a pinch yeah. of salt. Yeah. And but if given the conditions under which the railway people work, mm -hmm. their hands are tight, their eyes are shut, they are not allowed to speak and still you ask them 
to go swim the English Channel. And that is precisely what the Indian Railways is expected to do. You have people right from the gangman, the last man to the boatman, totally dedicated to railways. Otherwise, more than 14 lakh people, staff, union, not a single day strike. Last strike was during George Fernandez. So obviously, there's something good they are doing. And every time something happens because they are working under such constraints without resource. It's like uh, giving uh, a, a housewife or a cook or somebody, uh, a chef or whoever so is running the… Other questions now from railways, what, what would be the, according to you, the right kind of, I mean it's, it's a vast subject, but according to you, you know, a road ahead in terms of taking the right kind of steps. No, I was just telling that if there is a master chef who is really… Uh, best in the world and you tell him that make the best dish whichever and you don't give them give him in the ingredients the chef is great but there are no ingredients so uh, I, I would say understand the railways you ha if you understand the railways then only you can find solutions and I'm sure you're hinting at the passion which should really come with, along with no, uh, you it, know, it the does, idea to you know, because implement you, and execute absolutely things. you know uh, like uh, in, in order to understand the railways you have to I, I as a minister the first day I told the entire board I said please understand that I don't understand railways and also I need to learn from you I am here to set the, the guidelines, the policy, but you people have 35, 40 years of experience behind you. You don't expect me to get in 40 days. So please teach me, please make me understand and I took railways like a student. Yes, yeah, so you are talking about the resources and the talent which really need to be harnessed. But now talking about your experience as a veteran leader, especially also in parliament, uh, some issues let us take up and one of the biggest issues right now is this whole uh, question related to land acquisition. Uh, and it is not only a question of land acquisition, we know we are in India, there are farmers who seem to be anguished and there is a, there is a bill which is about the government, not about the government. How would you really look at this whole uh, deadlock, so to say, which is there right now? You see, it is the right of an individual in democracy against the might of a state. You cannot use in this modern world your might. If there are issues involved in development of the country, if there are railway lines, if there are irrigations, if for defence projects, no farmer is going to say no to you. So, right. so in the next session, what do you see coming? I mean. See, wherever you are not reasonable, what is democracy after all? What is parliament after all? It's a place where you discuss, debate, agree, disagree. Right? Yeah. If you just go and say that ordinance, that itself is not democracy. And who is bringing this? And I am not, I said this on the floor of the parliament also. If you see the BJP manifesto, their manifesto, the earlier manifesto itself says that whenever there is land, we are going to discuss, debate, argue on the floor of the parliament and we are not going to touch the land which is fertile. And if it comes to that, after discussing in parliament, we will send it to the standing committee, committees. Yeah. All these things you say in a manifesto and you just do the opposite of it, that is not democracy. And that is where I can almost, if I have any political sense, I can tell you that this is the third time you have brought it. Why go through that? If it, is it a question of ego? I do not think so ego should come. So, do you think, I mean, uh, let us look at the macro this, level this picture. This bill is not going to get passed. So, let us look at the bigger picture. The people this, leads, do not want. this leads to me my, the question about bigger picture, this government, which says that we are really, Vikas was the word which, uh, or Achyadin, let us say, that is what they came with. So, where is it now? After one year, do you think that they are really looking at development seriously? Achyadin, is it under your chair or is it under that plant? Because people at the bottom are not understanding this because at the end of the day, we are in very comfortable zone. We means people like you, like me, 
and upper middle class, they are in a very comfortable zone. They do not even understand what is the agony of the guy absolutely at the street level. They are in distress. A country after 65 years, you can blame it to any government, does not matter. But if a farmer who is feeding you, me and everybody has to commit suicide, even one farmer committing suicide. But, but that is why it came out with slogans or schemes like Make in India, where it said that India should be self sufficient and it is trying to, you know, uh, look at talent so, within. So, where are you making, where are you growing rice and paddies and pulses? Is not it Make in India? It is already being made in India. So, what do you want to do? You want to tell them that get lost? We do not want pulses, we want nuts and bolts. Now, who are you to decide what a farmer should do? Everybody is, I mean, the pink paper, with due respect the Fikis and CIs of the world that no, no, farming is not a good job. They should get out of farming and they should go into manufacturing. Are, I have to decide what I want to do. If you tell a person who is, uh, let us say, working as a designer, say that no, no, from tomorrow you should go and farm or no, no, you should go and cook from tomorrow. No, that is the heart and but soul. But that is what it is. Yeah. How dare you decide what an individual should do for heaven's sake. If he likes farming, let him do farming. As far as he is not getting enough from farming, why? Yeah. Because so of your, let me finish that, yeah. because of your policy. Any country where you do not give, when it comes to a private sector who is producing, let us say, electricity, yeah. you say, oh, this is your cost, we will add 20 percent to the cost and then give it. Why do not you do that with the farmers? This is your cost, then we are going to add 30 percent, 20 percent, whatever it is. And then this is going to be the, 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 the support so price. I hope the we people who that. are really take, should be taking notes, should be taking notes watching this interview. But we have to take a very short break out here. We, you are watching the quest here on Ratsabha TV. We are right now in conversation with Mr. Dinesh today. There are many more issues that he should answer and I am going to ask just after this very short break. Welcome back to the show. You are watching the quest here right now on Raj Sabha TV and we are right now talking to Mr. Dinesh Trivedi. Uh, let us come to Bengal now also and uh, when this government came, I mean we know that the leadership there and there was something that was missing. I do not know whether this Bangladesh visit has tried to soften that. How would you look at things which are happening? Soften what? This, uh, the fact that uh, Ms. Banerjee goes through Bangladesh, the fact that we discuss issues, do you, do you, think, do you think something new is happening? See. The Chief Minister of Bengal and for that matter all the Chief Ministers and the Prime Minister and all the Ministers, the common objective is the country. So in the federal structure, it is always the centre and the state. So there are issues involved which concern the state and I think uh, here Mamta Banerjee is a very responsible citizen and a very patriotic person. And whatever issues are involved, which is in the interest of the country, she does that. And that is where she played a major role in the land uh, bifurcation as far as Bengal and Bangladesh and uh, India is concerned, basically India and Bangladesh. Mm. So some of the land was bounding Bengal and Assam and all. So, I think that was the right thing for her to do and that is what she did. So, how so would you, how no would you look at this visit, I mean, about I think, the gains? For I think the visit was very good for both the countries and uh, as neighbours, we have to uh, wish each other well in terms of development and ultimately what matters is the job, the serenity, the peace. And that only so, comes. Some, some would observers or critics would argue and say that that somewhere uh, this visit has made uh, the CM of Bengal rethink uh, rather than be having a very rigid approach to things that was. Early. No, she she never has any rigid approach. Because if one doesn't understand the issue, then one feels that. I'll give you again coming back to land. When it was Singur Nandigram. Mm. Everybody thought that she's very rigid and there's no development in Bengal. Why is she doing that? But the very fact, people's will, and that is where the will of the people prevails. And the will of the people is, sorry, we will not give the land if you take it forcibly. Mm -hmm. And that is where I think 35 years of the, the rule or misrule of the left 
hmm. was thrown away. Now that puts me to another question. Okay, the left also realizes and left saw a decline in terms of their hold over Bengal, which is supposed to be somewhere in years back was synonymous with the left, so to say, and there comes TMC. But now people are again looking at what the Trinamool Congress or Mamata Banerjee's leadership is doing there. So there's a big question mark there as well. There are only answers, <laughs> no questions. In other words, if you see all the elections, uh, ever since Mamata Banerjee has come to power, by elections, local elections, recently held corporation and municipality election. I mean, we swept the election because it's people's will. And I, as a member of parliament, when I go to my constituency, when I meet people, when I do padhyatras, believe me, I also feel that wow, things have changed. Like 2009, when I contested my first election, and today, if I go to the same lanes and by lanes. You see development. When there was no rasta, there was no bijli, there is no pani, it's all come. People are not going to vote mm -hmm. if there is no development. People are not going to vote for your slogans, whether it is the slogans of uh, Garibi Hatao, which was earlier, or Ache Din, mm -hmm. or India Shining. It doesn't happen. It's the real development. It football. is they want what is on the ground. And they you can may see say it. anything, yeah. you can do anything, you can do a lot of marketing. Marketing is good enough, but if it doesn't match with the product, then there is counterproductive. Okay, so how is Bengal changing now? I mean, we of course are seeing it shining sometime when IPL happens and some of these odd uh, events happen. How is Bengal changing in terms of, uh, you know, a mix of let's say development and a mix of what Bengal is See, first of all, you, are, you, you also must understand the background that almost 250,000 crore of debt, which was given to us hmm. in 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 uh, in our entire thing when we took over. This liability came to us hmm. to TMC, but then government is a government, and to pay the interest of that, so most of our revenue hmm. goes in servicing How that debt, which was need? which was hmm. not ours doing. How much time will you need now? Our time is going on the right and, process and, and, and I think I think at, at, at this stage uh, it was a very difficult task and yeah. people felt that my God she is not going to do it. But and the you know, fact is Amit Mitra, yeah. our finance minister and Mamta Banerjee as a team have shown that without putting too much of burden on poor people, you can still do it how? You have plugged the loopholes. Mm -hmm. And Bengal is the first state yeah. where a lot of technology is being used, whether it is ration card. But you know what surprised one in fact when this whole Sardar scam came in and why it surprises that here came a, a chief minister who was known for her fiery honest uh, attitude and trying to really make real changes and here comes this uh, scam which really shocked everybody. Yeah, but who arrested the culprit? Mamta Banerjee's government. And the very fact is everything is under scanner. And uh, please understand, you can't hoodwink people at large. And people of Bengal, and why Bengal, all over the country, when it comes to honesty, today Mamta Banerjee would stand out amongst so many political personalities. Now that the BJP is looking with a lot of interest in Bengal, how do you think the party is really uh, coming up with let's say new ideas to really make its hold sustain, uh, party sustain its hold? Um, uh, for example, within the party, let's say churning, uh, things like that. No, no, I think we are just on course. And the course, like our slogan, Ma Mati Manus, and that slogan is still there, that we are concerned right at the bottom of the pyramid, if the bottom of the pyramid is strong, then your structure is going to remain strong. So basic, make the bottom strong. See, this is the difference. Here in the center government, everybody is talking about the trickle down effect. Mm. So your GDP could be 7%, but it is jobless growth. So the wealth is getting concentrated. In Bengal, the wealth is getting distributed. Really? So, if the wealth is getting distributed, because we have got so many small, small business which are coming to Bengal. Okay. And uh, it, 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 development is not only about a huge, big industry coming. That's welcome. But farms, the agriculture is going. Mm -hmm. 
small scale industries are growing in a big way which was so many industries were shut and at the same time uh, there are a lot of uh, people looking at Bengal for bigger projects. Do you think not only in Bengal but overall nationally also this infrastructure is being really addressed truly? Without infrastructure you can't grow and infrastructure doesn't take uh, one day it takes it takes almost a generation. Let's, let's look and at that the is where again coming back to the railways that whatever you do today the result of which will come after a, very, very a decade component. or so. So you are talking about bullet trains and you yeah. do not have the basic infrastructure. So infrastructure is something too, yeah. you have to develop and yeah. that's what West Bengal is doing. A political question that I want to ask, let's look at the whole uh, the political infrastructure which is being looked at. So in Bihar for example, Janta Parivar, uh, you are there in Bengal which BJP is thinking very, se looking se very seriously at and God knows, I mean it's trying to make its own ba base larger there. How would you look at this if, if there is any new political churning happening? See political churning happens why? It happens because the bottom wants it to happen. It doesn't happen in a vacuum, uh, which is invisible. It's only people who are attached to the ground, they know that what people want at the ground level. So if BJP has won by 30 or 31 percent vote share, then please understand a big vote share of 69 or 70 percent have voted somewhere else. So again democracy is arithmetic. I can understand if they have come with 50% mm. of voting. Mm. That's what I am trying to ask or extract from yeah, you. That, that is after one year, that is uh, how would you look at it? I mean, of course, litmus test in Bihar for BJP uh, and many other places, they are looking at South also. Uh, Bengal, they try to project certain people. You have a minister, young minister from there in the new government. So, how do you how do you look at any challenge if at all coming see the test the of uh, the pudding is in the eating you see all the by elections even up where they got so much of votes and all everywhere bgp has lost every single election i'm talking majority of them that means something is disconnect right and why is there disconnect because your slogan is not matching with reality. It is like, uh, you know, and I, I personally don't really approve of this slogan where you have this commercial fair and lovely. I know. Right? I know. And you say, exactly, and, and you have all kinds of things that you eat this and you'll become that. It doesn't work that way. So, somewhere down the line, the more stronger the slogan, the more is the expectation of people. Mm. Too. And this expectation when realized that, oh my God, nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. So when you give the manifesto that we are not going to touch the farm and you want to grab the land, mm -hmm. it means what? It means it's disconnect. If you take away your budget from the basic, which is health and education, which is women, child welfare, yeah. you, I mean, you have to be nuts. I'm sorry to use this phrase. You have to be out of your mind to touch the social yeah. projects. You know, I as a health minister. Yeah. We all feel, I, we are all feeling that. Yeah. You know, I used to say what nonsense is only less than one person for health. Mm -hmm. And you have this big, big slogan, health for all, housing for all. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. You have to be very serious. So one way, okay, let's talk about yoga. Okay. Yeah, which is very relevant. Sure. Very yes, great. Did you did you do it? I do it every day. I don't okay. need to. I didn't I don't need to. This is this is inborn. Okay. It's inborn. So here is another it's leader absolute, and they should be happy. It's yeah. totally inborn. I do it every day. That's why the energy level. But you are teaching Kabal Bhati. Avlom Vilom. Your breathing exercise. What are you breathing? You're breathing poison. So what do you want to do? You want to fix that poison? Both are important. No, but actually, more, actually, you know, as a as a politician, that by addressing these issues, one is looking at the macro picture of development, whether addressing yes, health so, issues, so like priority, yoga or sanitation, for priority, example. Priority, priority is not there. I mean, there's a great idea, but the priority is not. Priority is so, you want to if you want to clean. Okay, clean Ganga. Yeah. Great project, lovely idea. How do you clean Ganga? The easiest thing, let me tell you today, is to clean Ganga. It's the easiest thing under the sun. Why do you say easiest thing? 
don't pollute Ganga. Ganga's force is very, very strong. It can clear the basic dirt. I'm sure Mr. Mamati should be watching this. No, because you know, you, you are spending thousands of crores cleaning Ganga. It's like your Gangotri, you keep on throwing dirt. Ganga I, 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 think, I think there's so many issues and there's so many subjects that I would really love to, love to talk to you about. But I think we have to wrap up. So finally, your quest, as I asked every guest, Mr. Dinesh Trivedi, now you're on my show. What's your quest? The quest is of any human being is to realize the bliss within. I'm talking philosophically. And to realize that bliss within, whatever we do is the journey towards that. So if I get satisfaction out of public life, you get satisfaction out of questioning us, mm -hmm. then that is our quest. And the quest can never be at an ending stage. It is just a journey which we carry on. And the day we feel the quest is over, then I think the life becomes very dull. Okay. But I only wish that this is a country with thousands of years of research. Our religion is science. It's purest form of science. We just call it religion. Because if that science, when you apply in real life, is applied science. And applied science is the religion. And we have come across after thousands of years of various scholars who are known as rishis, who has done research. Mm. So we are blessed to be in this country. This is a great country with amazing talent. But somewhere down the line, we have lost our path because today there are no role models. And we need role models. Sometimes you have Patri se gadi utar gayi. So that is what it is. And I wish and I am very confident our upcoming generations are brilliant. They are very patriotic. And I see golden era for India. And the world is looking at that era of India because of what? Because of not Mercedes or BMWs or Audis. It's because of knowledge. Yeah. And India has it. Okay. So thank you so much thank for also summing up the whole Pleasure. idea of the quest Pleasure. for which you are here. And thank you so much for sparing your time and coming on to the Raj Sabha TV. And that was Mr. Dinesh Trivedi. And really I hope that personally, I think that I should have got more time to ask him more questions, which I'm sure he could have answered. There's always the next time. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this particular edition of the Quest on Raj Sabha TV. Thank you once again. Namaskar and bye-bye.